I want you to explain to me how to tie my shoes. We're going to take about four or five minutes. I, you know what? If you want to draw pictures, as long as you explain okay. your pictures, you can write paragraphs, you can write bullets. So it'd be, okay, right over the top of left. Right over the top of left. Pull tight. Oh, you take a shoelace in each of your hands. One shoelace in each hand. Good job. Thank you. Cross the laces. Um, put one lace through the hole created by the cross. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. You can let go. You never said to let go. Isn't this behind? No, that's the no. left. Like when you're tying your shoes. There you go. Come on. There you, there you go. go. All right. So, so now this is behind? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is towards me. It doesn't matter. But well, it's behind the other place. Well, it's, it's behind the shoe. It's this is behind. So here's what's happening. You guys are getting okay. very, very frustrated with me because I don't understand what you're trying to explain to me. Oh, yes. I see. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, you see? You see the little bridge? So. I don't. When I'm up here, it is really hard to explain to somebody who doesn't know how to tie your shoes when you do it without thinking about it. I do math all the time. And even this summer when I thought I wasn't doing it, I was swimming with someone and I said, oh, let's find the volume of this pool. We have to be careful being math teachers that you guys ask me questions and that I don't get frustrated by, well, what do you mean you don't know how to do this? And you know, start standing up and no, let me just do it for you. And so we need to build a classroom that allows everybody to talk. And you guys are able to stop me at any time and I will help you. If I'm up here showing you just how to do something and I don't explain it, that's yeah, that's only you and explain it. That's how you teach a kid. You okay? Perfect. Which is a little segue right into how we learned. I am going to show you how we want the homework to be done and turned in. This is getting us writing in mathematics. All right. So there won't be a lot of problems. The most problems I'll ever give you will be ten. It'll probably be less. And I'm hoping that you get it done while you're on campus, okay? So we're gonna walk through. So I need everybody to fold their paper. Is it hot dog way? We're gonna put number one. Is one and two thirds plus two and one fourth. Okay? So we write that down. Everything, all the math is gonna be on the left side of the paper. All the writing is gonna be on the right side of the paper. There are three questions that go along with each homework problem. First question right here is, how do you start? Because there are a lot of ways to start this problem. I would find the common denominator first, but that doesn't mean that's how you have to start because there's another way to start the problem. So I look here, my common denominator with three and four is 12. So I would multiply three by four and I would multiply four by three, and what I'm doing is multiplying. I do A because I knew how to do the problem, all right? If I don't know how to do the problem, so let's say I knew I had to find a common denominator, but I forgot how to do that. Where did you get stuck, or where did you have difficulty deciding what to do? I'm not sure if I'm supposed to add everything. So I want to add the numerator and the denominator, all right? So I, I'm going to say, I think you're having a feeling that might be wrong. Or somebody goes, no, that's not how you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Then C would be what resources were helpful to you? So did you talk to a teacher? Did you talk to a friend? Did you get on the internet? Did you look in a book? So I'm going to say I reviewed notes from last year. And then I figured out what to do, so now I continue with my A. Now I know how to find them all. I multiply and then I add, and then you would continue. Okay, let's try it for you guys. Remember, you gotta write the A. You gotta put what letter you're doing, so I know, all right? So I'm starting with A. And A asks, where do you start? How are you starting this problem? So everybody just take one second, write down some things, and then we'll, you can help me start. My question is kind of like, cause I would, would I write start in the brackets or something? Or uh -huh. write literally, I would square four, multiply that. Like you can say you'd start in the brackets because then your next step is gonna show me that you're squaring four. All right. 
Because I'm looking at this and I'm looking at what you're writing. Wait, do you have to write each step down? Yes. You should write each step down for right now because what we're going into is going to be more complicated. So we're going to start the process of logic. That's why we're starting writing it down because the problems will get harder. You have to explain to me which net goes with your answer. All right, now you will have to prove to me the answer. So if that means you draw this, cut it out, and fold it, then you do that. I'm going to assign you a number and you do that problem. Ready? One. Mark it maybe. Two. Yeah. Can be any of the other answers I don't know, but it can be the first one, so why would they make it possibly two? Mm -hmm. Are you square? Because right. it has to be, you can show it to class. You can draw the first one all the way through. Like, the, it has to be 12 inches. Yeah. Uh, you know, paper, paper. Wait, how many is that? Eight? Yeah. No, it's nine. You will be showing me that you are working together as a team. I don't want one person sitting just watching while the other person's doing all the work. Okay? Then where do I fold though? Fold them in the other line. Okay. Don't worry if they um if they touch, okay? Because we're gonna make it into a box here. If we were to fold it, the black and this side would be touching. See? So those two would actually be touching. I, think it, I don't know, I can't think of it. You want us to do it the visual way again? Yeah. Why do you think four? What's going on with four? None of them have the regular net. And I like the regular net to base everything else off. What do you mean the regular net? Like this one, like the one that looks like a cross. Oh. It doesn't have the standard net at all. Oh, oh. I see. Oh, I gotcha. We have a group that has two possibilities. So can you guys stand up and show us the two possibilities oh, nice. over here? She needs support. Come on, this is a team. On, so this is the net for A. It's kind of small, but... All right. And then you <laughs> fold it up into the picture that we're supposed to get. I guess it does work. And then that one like that. And then do you end up with the same answer? Yeah, because it's oh, like... we have a we have a dilemma. Anyone else? Did anybody be, do B and C on number eight? Yeah. B and C can't work? No. Are we sure? Yeah. We are starting to use problem solving. Half of the class is using visual. They're looking at it and folding it to try to make the box. And the other class, the other half of the class is actually cutting them out and physically making them. All right? They're both correct. But this is getting hard. I mean, we're down to two problems. One has two answers, and now four has no answers. Yes, On number four, we have C is made, and A can't be it. So I'm curious, how do we fix this? So if anybody can tell me which one works on number eight, A or D, I'd like that explained. And if you have an answer for number four, I'd like that explained. Now make sure you are working together in your group because thinking is hard.